Talk a little bit our, of our uh, experience with eco spirituality and just kind of being up there in nature. Um, I first just want to say when I um, when I always thought about dog sledding, I just thought it sounded absolutely amazing. But I figured it just was something that was never going to happen. It just seemed like oh, that's the only thing that people in Alaska do or something. But then when Matt finally texted me, uh, I think it was in November, said, "Hey, do you want to go dog sledding?" I didn't really believe it because I figured, no, no one's going dog sledding. But when I finally realized that he was actually serious about this, I've really never been a bit much more excited for anything in my life. I was just like, this is going to be super awesome. So I was very excited to do that. I mean, it, um, one thing about me is I, I've always been a city boy in a sense. I've grown up in Minneapolis. Um, but I've had my experiences with the wilderness before. I've gone. Uh, my grandparents owned a farm, so I'd, I'd been out there a bunch. I'd been in the Rockies, um, and I'd been up to the Boundary Waters. But there was something about this time that was different, and probably very, and very, very special for me. Um, it's kind of hard to say what it was. I mean, there were the same trees that I'd seen many times when I'd been to the Boundary Waters before, but this time I guess they had snow on them. So it was the biggest difference I can say. In these lakes, I, Matt kind of talk a little bit about it. The lakes that you'd have to canoe on during the during the summer, all of a sudden we were playing football on. This, I mean, it seems very simple. Okay, in the winter, ice freezes. But now, it, it was just something kind of amazing to stand up there and be like, whoa, I would, this, I would sink to the bottom of the lake right now. <laughs> yeah. so, um, so there's definitely something very special about a unexplored wilderness experience. And I really think it's important that all people get an opportunity to do this. Um, and uh, so that's why it's extremely important that we fight to protect places like this, because it's not going to be that they're always going to be there. Um, we're all aware and have heard about the science of global climate change and the threats that it has to the future of, of, of the way we know the world as it is right now. Um, I mean, by 2050, the, this place that we, that we love so much while we were up there, the pines, the aspens, the birches, they're not going to be there anymore. They're going to be replaced by shrubs. So this is, this is something that is extremely important, that we need policy change. Um, unfortunately, the free market doesn't doesn't protect places like this because the free market is much more like, oh, what's happening tomorrow? Oh, we're in a recession right now. We have to worry about, about what's happening in the next month. These places are going to change if we don't do something now. And it's going to be irreversible. So I really encourage you to I mean, think about the, these kind of things. And when we're looking at electing people, when we're looking at things that are important to us, these kind of policies are, are things that we need to be promoting. Um, mostly because I really think that a wilderness experience is truly a spiritual experience for all for all people. Um, it's if you're religious or not. I think it's the same thing. There's a certain power to disconnecting yourself from the rest of society and just being able to kind of reflect. Um, there's something about just kind of sitting there. Even the simple places can be extremely complex. I mean, you can be sitting on a log on just a small little slope. And all of a sudden, you see snow start coming down. You realize, wait, that snow has been—it's up in the canopy of these pine trees. It already fell once, and now it's falling again because of the wind. And you just start to see these—all these small little things that are happening around. You notice a chipmunk that's running up and down a tree because it keeps grabbing its acorn, dropping it, and going to get it again. And there's just there's something about uh, an experience like that that inspires a childhood wonder that I just really don't feel you can achieve unless you go outside of your element a little bit. And so that's what I'll take from this experience. Um, and I really encourage people to, if it's going dog sledding or if it's going some other place, really take an opportunity to take advantage of places like national parks and other wilderness experiences because I hope that they're going to be around for a while, but but you never know. So. Um, one guy that was also really special on this trip, I'm gonna let Dave talk about him a little bit, but uh, Paul Shirky was just a very, very cool man, and I really think that he's both a hero of St. John's and St. Ben's, but also Minnesota, and, uh, and as an American, I'm just kind of proud to know there's people like him, so anyway.
Dave. Yeah, I'm going to talk about the owner, uh, Paul Shirky, as both of these two mentioned. Um, it was just crazy because we didn't realize like what company we were under when we were there. Um, we knew he was a St. John's alum. Uh, we knew he owned this resort, but when we get to the resort, you're kind of like sitting there on the couch and you look over and there is a letter from Ronald Reagan, a letter from George Bush Sr., and from Gorbachev, um, yeah. <laughs> all to Paul Shirky, just framed up there. It's like, there's this guy that lives 100 yards away from our uh, resort, and he's got world recognition. Um, and he's just so, is the just most humble man I've ever met. Um, he'd be down with the guides at the same time as everybody else, like folding sheets, helping to cook, cook the meals. Pulling a car. Well, he's pulling a crashed car out of the ditch, and he was the, one of the first six people to walk to the North Pole. Um, well, that's what they mean. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, um, so he was the first man to the North Pole with Will Steger and Ann Bancroft. I'm sure you've heard those names. Um, he's been to Greenland. He's been Antarctica, Russia. He crossed the Bering Strait with a group of Russians, which was a huge diplomatic event, even. Huge implications of that. He was just completely world famous, and here he is in a little cabin in Ely, Minnesota, helping, showing us a PowerPoint slide about ecology or eco spirituality in his, ca in his house to 10 college students or whatever. Yeah. Um, it just kind of attests to the values that this institution holds. Um, just of being humble and no matter who you are, you still got to go back to your origins and help even the small, just 13 college students. Mm -hmm. So that's basically what I got out of it, was the values that we hold. So.